Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery, voice to voice technology, eh? In case you're not aware of what this is, it basically allows you to change one voice into another voice. A bit like having an AI voice changer. And the best part, everything you need is now all in one app, plus it's really quick to train as well. So here it is, the retrieval based voice conversion web user interface hardly a mouthful at all. You may be aware that AI singing voice conversion can be a bit of a task, as there are multiple stages involved before you can create your masterpiece video with John Senna dancing while listening to Abraham Lincoln singing the very latest K-pop song. First, you need to collect a bunch of voice samples, process them, train a model, separate the vocals from the music track you're changing if you don't already have them separately, run your new AI model on those vocals, and finally mix them back in with the music. Thankfully, that can now all be done via this one web interface. And what is the quality like? Well, let's have a listen. I've used an example song from Pixabay. There it is, meaning that in less than 30 minutes of training time, I can be the one singing instead. So let's take a quick listen to a clip of the original so we know what I'm going to convert from. And then now with that voice changed by this AI to sound like me instead, Want to do this yourself? Then stick with me here and I'll show you exactly how. As with anything Python, installation is an absolute breeze and the best part is that it works on a range of operating systems, even Microsoft Windows. Here's a little table with some of the requirements. If you use Microsoft Windows, sorry if you are using that, I do hope things get better. What you could do is download and install 7-zip, download the rvc-beta 7-zip file from the Hugging Face page, unzip it, and then use go-web.bat. A normal install can also be done, just like they have here, though you may want to download the 7-zip archive anyway, as that has all the models in it. Personally, I did the normal install using an Anaconda Virtual Python 3.10 environment, as I like simple app management. There is also a Google Colab available if you prefer to use Google Colab. So with whatever installation method you chose, you should now have your web interface up and running. Let's dive into this fascinating world of voice to voice technology and see what amazing things we can create. If you already have a model, you can do model inference straight away. Uh, or like me, you can begin with training one if you don't. There is the training tab. However, before we delve into the training process, let's just quickly go over these five tabs. So first of all, you've got model inference, you've got separation of accompaniment and vocal, train, checkpoint processing, so you can mix checkpoints together there, export ONNX, which I've never used, and also an FAQ as well. To begin with, as mentioned, we're gonna start with the training tab, as this is where you will create your very first voice model. Step one, for the experiment name, simply enter the name you want to give your project. So you could do, for example, nerdy, because that's me. As for the sample rate, I personally prefer always using 40K, and I always leave this on true as well, as that seems to be the best. Model architecture, you can select either version one or version two. Personally, I prefer version two. Number of threads, I think, is probably picked automatically. Congratulations, you have now completed step one. The next step is step 2a. The first thing it asks for here is the path to the training directory. If you're not familiar with terms like files and directories on your computer, this part can be quite confusing. You could think of directories as computer boxes where you organize your things, files in this case, and I've put them into a training directory. So there is my path, training nerd. If we have a quick look at that directory, as you can see, it's absolutely full of audio files. 
If your name is different, you may wish to use something else, but it's entirely up to you. Even though I'd already split my samples up into around 250 segments, you don't actually need to worry too much about that because this program will automatically handle long audio and split it accordingly. Generally speaking, between 10 and 50 minutes total audio is required. Any vocals are fine, singing, talking, whatever. Just make sure that you don't have any music in the background. It should be all one person, vocals only. Okay, so now you've put in the directory with all your samples in, you can just click process data. That will take a few seconds and process all of the samples for you. Now you're ready to move on to step two. B. If you have multiple graphics cards, then you can put them in here, but I've only got a single GPU, so I just leave that as is. The defaults are absolutely fine. Next, you have pitch extraction, which has three options. Personally, I always go with harvest. PM is fast but low quality. DO is a bit slower but better quality. And harvest is the slowest but the best quality. So with harvest selected there, I just click feature extraction, that will take a few seconds and finish that task. Step three, well here for the most part, you can just go ahead and click that one click training button. Come back in about 10 minutes and you'll have a model. However, if you are like me and you do like to change things a little bit, you've got some options there for how often you want to save the full model, the total number of epochs, the GPU batch size, and some options for saving. Personally, the way I like to set this up for a version 2 model is to set that to 10. Total training epochs I do to 200, which is about the maximum you'll ever need. As I have a very large GPU, I've got 24 gig of VRAM, the batch size up to 40, as that's the maximum my GPU will handle. I like to click yes to only save the latest checkpoint. I'll keep cache all on no, and I say yes to save small finished models. So with your model training via that one click training, I would suggest also going and having a look over at the frequently asked questions tab. There's quite a lot of information here, particularly useful are question nine and question 10, how many total epochs are optimal and how much training set duration is needed. Now that you've got your very first voice model, it's time to do that AI voice to voice thing. If you already have the voice that you want to convert, you can skip straight to model inference. However, if you want to do something like change the singer of a song that you don't have the vocal stems for, like I did here, then you'll first need to separate those vocals out from the background music. And this is where the separation tab comes in handy. Once again, those files and directories come into play as you'll need to know where you've saved your music files. The first box is if you want to convert multiple files from a given directory, as I tend to do just one at a time, I delete that and then use the box underneath instead. Model selection has two options, like it says at the top there, HP2 is for input without harmony, or if with harmony and instructed vocals do not need harmony, use HP5. Basically, if you're unsure, use both, have a listen to the output and see which is best for you. In my case, I'm going to use HP2 here. By default, the output goes into the OPT directory, so feel free to change that if you like. When you're ready, push the huge orange convert button and you'll have split the vocals from the music. Let's have a quick listen to that. Of course, there's a few seconds of silence. There we go. Anyway, that's done quite well. We've got the vocals there without the music. Even if there is a little bit of an echo or something there in the voice. All right, so now we're ready to go with inference. The page does look huge, but really it's two things in one. The top half there is for single voice conversion and there you've got a batch as well. So I'll just be going through the one. The batch is essentially the same, but you're doing loads at a time. Again, everything is pretty straightforward here. Push that huge refresh button and then you should see your options appear in this little pull down here. My list is absolutely huge as all the girls would agree, but you'll probably only have one option in there the first time. So pick that. 
I'm going to pick that one because that's my trained voice. Next, you have to select a pitch, just like it says above, for low to high conversion, use plus 12. If it's about the same, use zero. And for high to low voice conversion, use minus 12. The source voice in this case is quite high. My voice is a bit lower, so I'm going to use minus 12. Once again, those files and directories come into play here. So put the path to your vocals in. If you did that default voice separation, then you'll have the two files in your OPT directory. You want the one which starts vocal. So there in my OPT directory, I have the long name of that WAV file, the one that starts with vocal. For pitch extraction, again, PM is fast and harvest is best. So I like to select harvest. Everything else I leave at the default, apart from this path to index, which should have a pull down menu. There is the one that I want to use because it matches that inference voice. OK, so now you can go ahead and click that very tiny convert button. And in just a few seconds, you should have your output. And there it is. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's me. Now you can right click that save audio as I'm going to put it in my OPT directory as well. I'm using Audacity here. I've got the instrumental. So I just drag that other voice in and then I can file export as whatever I want and it will mix those two voices together. Plus, if you thought that was cool, then you may also like this Nerdy Rodent video.